Welcome back to Mama's Nest, the show that teaches you everything that you need to know about motherhood and child care. This is the show for you, Mama. We're still here with our guests, Dr. Ayadele and Faith, mother of two and consultant pediatrician. Mm -hmm. They've been sharing expert advice as well as experiences real life experiences. And so we're still going a bit further into yeah. the discussion of how to take care of your newborn's skin, mm. right? You know, when you give birth to a baby, mm. you keep pouring that disinfectant, or antiseptic. <laughs> you keep pouring that water must be cloudy. Ah. If the water is not cloudy, you have not the baby it. won't take a bath. Yeah, but is this, is it really, really important to, wow. as long as the water is clean, is it important to add that um, antiseptic? And does that antiseptic have a, any negative effect at effect. all, or could it have on a baby's skin? Wow, for me, this table shaking. This you use that, B? I use uh -huh. that. <laughs> Catch you. You know. This table that has <laughs> only. It's protect from infection, germs. <laughs> yes, you know. yes. This, this table that has only one leg, but they are shaking like this. Let's, if people, let's fall if people fall, <laughs> if people fall down. So, 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 anti, I mean, antiseptic solutions are very commonly used, you know, here in, in this part of the world. And that is because, as you said, you know, a lot of our water sources okay, are not reliable. reliable. So if I you're living, understand that. yes, you know, so if you're living, I don't want to call any area in like, they'll come for you. They'll come for me. I don't want to call any area in Lagos. I Where their water point. is uh, one for the color. <laughs> but, yes. but, 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 that, but that being said, I mean, if you are sure that your water is treated, because I mean, um, there are some people who have their you know personal tanks and it's chlorinated. Treated. Yes. So okay. the antiseptic solutions are not necessary. Necessary. The okay. problem with okay. antiseptic solutions is that on our skin, we have what we call our normal flora. Okay. These are the natural organisms that actually live on our skin. Mm. Are you um, hearing? Uh, mm. And those organisms actually that the landlords of our skin and they help us to fight off the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria. By the time you use those antiseptic solutions, they kill off a lot of our normal flora. Okay. And mm. then you think that it's doing the work of killing the bad the bacteria. bacteria. But I mean, mm. you've killed off the normal flora that should be protecting should your be skin. That should be protecting your skin. Okay. And the bad bacteria now has the opportunity to now thrive. Go, to now thrive. And so it, it is only in the most dire circumstances, maybe okay. when you are sure that maybe baby has fallen into a gutter. Or the water. Or the water so is particularly, not yes, not clean, that you can say, okay, maybe one should use um, what we call antiseptic, antiseptic solutions antiseptic and they should not solutions. be used every day. And they should not okay. be used every day. So if you are sure that the source of your water is clean, you absolutely a don't need quantity. antiseptic solutions. Yeah. And a little quantity. I was also when going to do, say that, 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 that how, what, what amounts, if you decide, okay, you need to use water to use is clean. I know that, um, you know, there are probably instructions, you know, manufacturer's um, thing for how much you should use but at the end of the day it really should be left to your own discretion but it is absolutely it is not necessary and it should be used only in circumstances when you think that the water is unsafe or unclean unsafe. or the baby has been exposed to significant amount of germs in the environment germs, because it's always part of what we buy yeah as a new mom yes. that it must be it's there must be i'm there. just it's thinking those list. guys are cashing it's out the list. <laughs> <on> the list. <laughs> cashing so. out based on based on a new mom has to Use it. it has to have my it. husband needs to watch this episode, and my mom also needs to watch <laughs> I, it. I mean, because... I, 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 I'm all for really, well, you know, making the environment as clean as possible. As so possible. scrubbing the floors, scrubbing everywhere that's around. And also the baby's, the, baby. um, the baby's, um, the, baby. the buckets, buckets and, and, and the baths, tops, yes, and but all for that. The bath water is not necessary. Not necessary. Well, um, how long can we? Is it when they are only newborn or? When they get to a certain age, you can Is introduce okay? the, the use of antiseptic in their water. So, or... for even for antiseptic solutions for bathing, even adult dermatologists say generally, generally, okay, don't do it routinely. Don't do it as an everyday practice. practice. Yes, if you are, a, if you are a footballer, I'm hoping that you'll be signed on by one of the big clubs in Europe and you're rolling around in the stand every day in the name of playing football. I mean, why not do knock yourself out? But somebody who is just going doing routine work, entry AC, mm -hmm. AC in your office, mm -hmm. they are not really. You don't need it. You don't need it. You know, same same thing with antiseptic soap, soaps actually. So for babies, a mild, gentle, mild, gentle soap, soap is adequate. You know, antiseptic soap, and, and mm -hmm. yes. Yes. because they are killing off the normal, the normal bacteria. bacteria on yes. Okay. Skin. All right. Um, how about the issue of measles? Um, Faith mentioned something <laughs> funny, which I also remember from my childhood, and mm. um, that 
Within a certain yeah. age. Like for every child, every child, they must either have measles or chicken pox. <laughs> I also heard that. That one you know, give me I, was scared. <laughs> I lived in the fear of measles. God, when is it going to come? Exactly. I'm like, hope this is not measles. Hope this is not yes. chicken pox. And you know? Is there any truth to that? Is, it, the, is there the, a fact? Is it so, a fact? So it isn't actually. So it, it, there okay. isn't any law that says that everyone must have measles or chicken pox in their lifetime. In their lifetime. There are some people who have been born and they've lived up to 100 years and they didn't catch either. Okay. So there is no, it's not a right of passage. It's not a developmental milestone that if you don't get measles or chicken pox, I'm mm -hmm. not going to open the bank accounts for you. No, it's actually absolutely. <laughs> or maybe I know a child. Well, maybe I know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so no, it, it, it doesn't follow those rules. And the other thing I like to mention is the idea that not every rash is measles. It's measles. Mm. So some mothers see a rash all over the child's body, and next thing they say, Ah, doctor, he has measles. Mm. And I'm like, how do you, you know? It's like, hey, it's all over the body. Like, does he have a fever? I say, no, it's just the body. Like, ah, <laughs> okay. Just bring, let me see. Because okay. measles always comes with a fever. With a fever. Always comes with a fever, okay. with the rash all over the body. And so, because they feel that, you know, oh, it's measles, they will now go and begin to give, you to know, give all them. sorts of, yes. again, herbal concoctions and use all sorts of creams that maybe if they had seen me and I said, oh no, this is just heat rash. So okay. all you need to do is avoid heat exposure. Heat exposure. Never mm -hmm. concussion for babies. Yes. So You'll be surprised. Yes, you'll be surprised. Like yes. a labo. Like You'll be surprised real, that what, yeah. and it's our, it's our it, it parents happens. really, and the, and and the grandparents. Yes, for, so for a lot of the mothers that I see, it's a lot of pressure from exactly from it's usually old, pressure from um, older yeah. parents, you know, yeah. parents and grandparents. Yeah. But how likely is a baby to catch measles? How is it communicated? Um, measles is airborne. Funny hey. enough. <laughs> so if somebody has measles in their respiratory tract and they are talking like this with you, or they sneeze or cough and you inhale those droplets or those particles, or those particles get into your eyes, then you actually... And they know it's right it on the face. <laughs> so, <laughs> so exactly, is it that these people just carry the virus? No. But it's a virus, it's right? It's a virus. They carry it around. It's not, on, it's not visible on their skin. Hmm. So, so fortunately, um, that is, is this fortunately, this English is this, is this <laughs> me now. So, uh, unfortunately, when it comes to measles, um, what happens is that. So at least we can know and protect our babies from. Ah, I'm, I'm landing. Even we too. Is it, <laughs> when, when it comes to measles, eh? Say a person has has been exposed to measles, the person becomes capable of infecting other people up up to about five days before they develop. The rash. Eh? Mm? Yes. The person that catches measles today, the person that has been exposed to somebody that has measles. Yes. Mm -hmm. The person can begin to infect other before people they even five manifest days before it. they manifest the symptoms. So that's why days. it's also advised to always keep your baby indoors. Don't go out too often, except you have to go on vac for vaccination. Exactly, which is and which is why vaccination is really important. important. It's really important to actually just eliminate that risk. And the person actually remains infectious for up to five days after the rash has gone. So the fact that the rash mm. has gone doesn't mean doesn't that the person mean, cannot person is infect free. this free. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. a person, which is why we always say if a child has a rash with a fever, for instance, for older children, we always say don't bring them to school. Yes. 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 So Even if they have any rash at all. Once they have it. So if they have a rash. Yes, if they have, the, if they have a rash take them at all. to like crutch. Yes. So take them to my hospital kids, first. Even to cough. <laughs> they yes. They say don't, don't, don't bring, don't bring them to school. <laughs> it's better that way. Cough, mm. cutter. Let them it's stay better that way. Mm. So, yeah. so, so, so again, not every rash is measles. And um, I guess um, it brings me to the point about when to go to the hospital yes. for a rash. For a rash. Mm. Yes. So um, when it comes to a rash, what I'd say to parents is that number one, and I guess we are really taking care of or trying to talk to mothers who really have just had mm -hmm. their newborns. Yes. And in our books, up to three months is still considered like a relative oh, newborn. Yes, so any months. rash in any child that is less than three months, please take to the hospital, the hospital. because you never know what it is. Let us make the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any child that has fever and a rash, Please take to the hospital to the immediately hospital. because you never know what exactly the diagnosis might be. It might be something life threatening. Yes. Then, mm -hmm. if you have any rash that is associated with bleeding, maybe the oh. rash begins to bring out little amounts of uh, blood. How about the ones that have like a little bubble and it oh, can burst? And they can burst. Yes. Uh, so, those ones, if they don't have a rash, then you don't have to go to the hospital immediately. immediately. But if you now notice that, you know, it's those ones that it has a bubble, it bursts, it touches somewhere else, and a new one oh, comes up where that water touches. Uh, 
please, my one is a hospital visit immediately. 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 Then any rash associated with the redness of the eyes yes. and peeling of the skin. Okay. Please go to the hospital immediately. And um, I, I think those are the tips for going to hospital whenever okay. a baby has a rash. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you've heard it, mom. When your baby has a rash and a fever, doctor, doctor's Tracy office. Way. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any experiences? I think I had one experience where I, we had to see a doctor. Mm. My boy had a rash. My um, my baby he was a baby then. Okay. Um, for my first daughter, it was her um, mom. Okay. Mm. It was so reddish, like a reddish the, rash. Yeah. The the skin, her skin was peeling. Mm. There and it was, you know, when water touches it, she feels discomfort. But and it was even that time, I think, answers. Mm. So, you know, nobody, no movement, no and movement. All of that. so I was communicating with, with um, doctor. a doctor. Yeah, I just sent picture. okay, but do this, do that, use something mild, air the baby's bum, don't, okay. not, not them, don't wear that part for a while, oh, and all wow. of that. Don't consider the fact that, oh, she'll go around, she might pee on she the floor. Pee on just, the floor. Yes. Just sometimes you <laughs> yeah. have to go through. Yeah, that. just go through yeah. it and yes. all of that. And within a um it cleared a, yes. within a short period yeah. of time. I would say a week. Mm, that's amazing. Okay. Yes, a week. Okay. Almost a week. Too. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you have to go through that discomfort, yeah. that discomfort. of um, mm. you know, not having to wear your baby diapers Diaper. when they have like <laughs> nappy rash. Because the only thing most of the time that would eh, heal it eh, is just eh, air. Eh, just air. Just, just eh. dry. Red breeze just blow. Just, just, just blow. Ah. <laughs> when the, the baby will poo, or we? Let the, yeah. let the, it's what we signed okay. up for. Let the, let the I area, tell you. Let the area breathe. <laughs> let it breathe. breathe. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes you don't have to seek, um, you don't have to use like serious medication, mm. except of course if your baby has a rash and a fever or has a rash like Dr. Dr. Ayadele said that has you know those little bubbles and it bursts and you know it just replicates if the water touches somewhere else mm. it causes yeah, another another rash there so there's this popular belief also that when you give birth to your baby the baby's the the complexion on the baby's ear that the outer ear now the pinna okay. is the complexion your baby will be have us. when your baby grows up so but that's the permanent con no what was your experience was your baby's ear dark uh, my baby's my second baby's ear was dark i ensured i felt uh this is that is copy yeah okay <laughs> well, ebony, ebony someone, black ebony black did the complexion she just, even yeah out? she just changed her complexion okay like, with someone within some months she just started turning light complexion and i'm like oh <laughs> it's not even a fact. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it's actually not a fact. It, like it, it isn't. Right. I, I know some people say that, and and here's what it is, um, Fume. A lot of parents. Uh, so most babies that, and I've <laughs> let me estimate that. If I'm being conservative about my estimates, I think I've been present at delivery of over a thousand babies okay. since my career began. Wow, wow, that's a lot of people. A thousand, I've welcomed a thousand people to Nigeria. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, that's wow. a conservative estimate. And um, I haven't seen a baby that was born black. Most of the babies that are born are a little bit light skinned. Light skinned. A little bit light skinned. And they gradually grow into their complexion, be it dark, be it lighter, you know. So they will eventually change okay. from that, you know, wonderful light skin color that they have at birth. Like me. Yeah, check up with their. Yeah, I remember this is from my mommy, Yao Ibo. You see? Oh. I was as light as, in short, like my mommy is. When as you light were born? As, yes, yeah. even growing up, but later. My complexion, my complexion changed. Exactly. So. I, exactly. I saw my, my, my picture from a few weeks after birth and I was like, this isn't me. This isn't <laughs> you. You. So, 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 so the idea is that a baby will enter into their natural color. But a lot of parents yeah. actually run around looking for looking solutions. For solutions and mm -hmm. creams and solutions mixing things. Because it's not even a problem that a child has gone into their natural complexion and looking for funny creams and that mixtures. Bring, bring them back to... Bring them back to... It's not possible. You know, you know it's... Um, and even if you decide that you want to do that, it's not going... It's going to be to the detriment of some of the health you know okay. um, aspects yeah. of the child's life you know so you just don't know what the more long-term consequences of lightening the skin of a child might be even up to adolescence even up to mm -hmm. adulthood the, the, so, the child still has yeah. like the whole life ahead of him and that's organ like you said the largest organ of the body imagine um imagine damaging that that at a very young age so yeah, how's the baby yeah. how's the child going to go yeah. through life with so, um, so so again you know i'm um, so parents please just 
stick with the complexion that your child becomes. So they are beautiful, dark, light. So Doesn't don't try matter. to get any products to yeah. get them back to the complexion that they were when they Doesn't were born. Really because the complexion that they become when they become children is absolutely perfect. And I think it's mostly with um, babies that come out, maybe a bit dark, maybe... For their first month, the third day says no baby actually not, comes not, out. Not, yeah. I mean, the for their first, uh, okay. first few months, then later they say, "Ah, this baby was fair." What and happened? Then, you know, what happened? But the complexion is actually <laughs> yeah, from yeah. It, it, it inherited complexion. Yeah, they, they, you know? exactly. The complexion is from they somebody the in, <laughs> in the family. Yes. yes, it's from somebody in the family, and the fact that probably the mother has um, used some products to lighten up doesn't mean that mm. your baby will inherit the skin. Mm. It's artificial. It's artificial. Mm. It's artificial. It's artificial. It's artificial. And your baby cannot inherit yeah. an, an artificial complexion. Exactly. Cannot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We're slowly coming to the end of the show. Thank oh. you. Thank you, Dr. Edele. <laughs> you don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> and thank you so much, Faith. It's been such an intriguing conversation. It has how to take care of your newborn baby's skin. It is so much more than I even thought it was. I have three kids. Faith has two kids. So this just tells you that with motherhood, learning never ends. We keep learning. Yeah. Sometimes you have to unlearn yeah. and you have to it's relearn, learn. which is actually what the show is about. And thank you too to our audience. You guys have been amazing. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that you can send in your questions. Send it in as a comment or as a message. Our social media handles are scrolling on your screen right now. Mama's Nest is proudly powered by Cousins Baby, makers of child skincare products to support moms on their motherhood journey. It's been an awesome one, and we will see you in the next episode. Mom, you can do this. Bye.